Welcome back. Today we are talking about pharmacology. I've been doing some videos talking to you about specific drug categories and I realized I need to take a step back and talk to you first about what is pharmacology and how do we get the information we use at the bedside every day. So we're going to take care of that and look at how drugs go from idea to being at the bedside right after this. Welcome back, my name is Tammy and this is Nurse Minder and on this channel we do everything nursing. So if you're new here, consider subscribing below so that you get the next video when it's released. Pharmacology, the study of drugs. Now just as a quick aside, when we're looking at medical terminology, there are key elements that we can look at to help us explain what a word means. And this is the suffix, prefixes, endings. And so in pharmacology, Ology means the study of. So when you see that at the end of any word, you know that you're looking at a science that studies something. In this case, pharma means drugs, so we are looking at the study of drugs. Now at the bedside, healthcare providers are mostly focused with pharmacotherapeutics. And this is therapy of drugs. So this is the use of drugs to treat, prevent, and diagnose diseases. And we're often focused on the therapeutic effect, the thing that we want to happen. Like when you have a headache and you take an acetaminophen, your headache goes away, yay! But we also need to understand the adverse effects, those things that can happen that we don't necessarily want. So maybe I feel really lethargic after I take that acetaminophen, or I've got a bit of a stomach pain. So these are the things we also need to be aware of as a healthcare provider. Now, pharmacotherapeutics takes into consideration two other classifications of drug studies. So we have pharmacodynamics, and this is the do. Think of the D in dynamics as what do my drugs do? So are they in the body to replace or substitute for something that's not in a sufficient volume? So maybe uh, an example here would be an antidepressant in that our body's not making enough of the happy hormones and so the antidepressants are coming in to replace and substitute. Is it an enhancement or a stimulation of maybe something that should be working that's kind of got a little lazy maybe? So for uh, instance, maybe my red blood cells aren't being produced at the rate in which I need them, so I'm going to take something that stimulates production of red blood cells. Is the role of the drug to stop or to slow down processes? So when I have anxiety, I feel all a little jittery. I take a medication to calm those firing of the nerves signals. So I want to slow it down. Or interfere with processes. So maybe I've got an infection going on and I need an antibiotic to interfere with that replication of bacteria that's causing me to feel really sick. So pharmacodynamics is really looking at what does the drug do in the body. So what is its role? This gives us information about our pharmacotherapeutics. The other piece is pharmacokinetics. Kinetics is movement, so how is it traveling through the body to where it needs to go? This involves absorption, so is it being absorbed through the stomach or through the skin? How is it broken down in the body? Does it need to go through the liver? Does it need to bind to a protein? How is it excreted? So am I going to get rid of it through the urine or through my stool or through my respiratory system? And then how is it distributed? And distribution is looking at things such as, uh, things that would impact distribution such as maybe the, the amount of fat tissue or the blood vessel circulation. So if I've got really poor circulation to my feet and I want my antibiotic to go down there and interfere with that bacteria, well, it may not actually be able to get there because of the lack of circulation. So distribution. These elements of pharmacokinetics give us information that we use at the bedside in our pharmacotherapeutics on a daily basis. It gives us information about onset of drugs. So once they've studied all these pieces, I know how long I should expect for that drug to kick in and start to work. It's peak duration. How long I can reasonably expect it to stay and that includes its half-life. That's another concept involved in pharmacokinetics. And then it gives us our loading doses, critical doses, things like that. So pharmacotherapeutics involves pharmacodynamics, the doing of the drug, what is its role, and pharmacokinetics, the movement of the drug throughout the body. 
so that when I'm at the bedside, I can treat and care for my patient appropriately. Next, I want to talk to you about the process drugs go through from generic idea into that pill bottle on your shelf. Before we talk about how we go from an idea to an actual drug that's used in patient population today, I think it's important to know where our drugs are coming from. So there's many sources of drugs and where we can derive inspiration. So plants, for example, is one place where we find and poppy seed for opium. Uh, foxglove was actually used in digitalis. Uh, a lot of these things are now made synthetically, but just a little bit of a history there. We still use plant-based medications. Animal sources, initially when insulin was first brought out, it came from a cow and a pig's pancreas. Uh, but thyroid and growth hormone also initially came from animal byproducts or animal sources such as the hypothalamus, my apologies. There's inorganic drugs such as aluminum, iron, gold, many of these are used to treat a variety of uh, symptoms. And then now synthetically, of course, many of our drugs are made synthetically where the scientists are genetically engineering elements to create a product that will treat or cure or diagnose an illness. So once a chemical is believed to have therapeutic value, it needs to undergo this rigorous testing process um, and assessment process outlined by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. And the first step is preclinical trials. Now you can run all the data and simulation scenarios you want in a computer with numbers, but until you put it into a biological environment similar to humans, we won't know what it actually does. So animal testing is extremely important as the first step to identify whether it's safe to try in humans. And so these are going to be strict studies and they're looking for one, does the drug have the therapeutic effect intended? And two, does it cause any adverse events that would be too extreme, too toxic, cause harm to fetus, and if that's the case, they stop the drug trial right here. But if it's deemed to be safe to go on, if it's safe, we're gonna then go into phase one. If it's not safe, then it's stopped and abandoned at this very first step. In phase one, these are clinical trials in which the drug is allowed to be tested in patient populations that are healthy. We want to just make sure that it's safe to put into anybody first of all. So we've got healthy, usually young men and women. Now women of childbearing age may not be um, included depending on what the drug's intended effect is. So first is healthy patients looking to see if the drug has the intended effect, what are the adverse events, does it cause anything that would cause the, the study to be shut down, if there's harmful effects um, then it's stopped here as well. At this stage the drugs are given free of charge, they are not um, there's not a burden to this person to participate in the study financially and they are followed and documented to see just what is happening with this drug in a healthy human being. Sometimes drugs that showed promise in animals don't show anything in humans and that's another reason why this drug would be stopped here at this stage is that it doesn't have the therapeutic intent needed. If there is promise let me grab my orange. Then we're going to go on to phase two. Now phase two again is another tightly structured study. These involve expert clinicians who are following these patients. But now we're looking at people who actually have the disease in which it was intended for. So we have a really small group of people they are again informed about consent and informed about side effects and potential benefits. They volunteer to be a part of this study and we're looking to see if it still has the intended therapeutic effect with minimal impact and adverse events. If it does not, and this is sometimes where studies fail as well, now in phase three we're opening this up to a wider market. of people with the disease process intended to be treated. The physicians are educated on the 
intended therapeutic effect, the adverse effects, and they monitor their patients closely and report back all of the findings to the clinical trial lead. This information is then shared with the FDA. If it's deemed to be therapeutic with the intended effect, with minimal adverse effects, harmful effects to the patients, it has to go through FDA approval. And now this is where our generic, this has been a generic name the whole time. I should write that here. It's only had a generic name at this time. Once it receives approval, then the person or the company who's making that drug can now give it a brand name. And it is for consumer use. And the FDA continues to follow. This never leaves FDA's um, area of responsibility because sometimes once it's opened up to the wider population, we start to see adverse events that we didn't see in any of these other stages. And drugs have been pulled even after they've gone through this whole trial process. They can still be pulled even in this time frame. So these are in, drugs in phase four under continued evaluation. Okay, so we started out with an idea. Preclinical is with our animals. We need to make sure it's safe in a biological environment similar to ours. Generic name only, which represents the compounds in the drug. Phase one, we're gonna to go to healthy individuals, young men and women. We wanna see what the actual effect is and side effects. If that passes, we go to phase two, which is people with the disease, very small group, tightly coordinated, really structured clinical um, investigators are following this entire process. If that's positive, we go to the next stage, which is phase three, which goes into a wider market under the physician's control, and they are still reporting back to FDA. If there's nothing untoward that is visible at this point, it goes for approval and gets a brand name and is then on the market. So if you have a patient that comes in, there's a lot of drugs out there and our process could take years before it's actually approved for public usage in our country. So maybe you've got someone who's talking about, I've heard about this new drug that has um, got promise in curing cancer. Well, we need to understand where in this process it is so we can educate our patients about what's happening with those drugs. Thanks for watching. Today we talked about what is pharmacology and pharmacotherapeutics and how does that impact our work at the bedside. Additionally, we looked at where drugs, the process they take to go from idea to actually being used in our patient population. That information is all really important as we are working directly with our patients and we need to be educating them and be aware of those processes so that we can give them the best information to make the most empowering decisions for their journey. So don't forget to like and subscribe to this video, share it with your friends, and if you have some comments or suggestions about pharmacology, in particular for this video, leave them in the comment box below, I do respond to them. And if you have some information you'd like to add to this, please share it because we are stronger together. Until next time, make it a great day.